evening. It's lovely to be with you again. I hope you are well. And today, I think, is the perfect day to get into some comfy clothes. So, it's been a little bit murky here, but it's been really hot and uncomfortable. So, I think we should get into some pyjamas or jogging bottoms. Or, do what I've done. Get into a nice, big, soft dressing gown. So, it's nice and soft. And get yourself I just had my big cup of tea in a big cup. <laughs> it says, I'm a big cup for a rainy day. And so, I've had my cup of tea, so I'm all ready to read to you. And as you can tell, I'm going to be reading from this book again, The Children's Treasury of Literature, because uh, in the last video I read to you Rapunzel, and I've had another video requested, which is one of my favourites, Snow White and Rose Red. So, hopefully you will enjoy them. Got the sticky cover. <laughs> And what I also like about this book um, are the illustrations. I like the fact that they're so different with each story. So some are in colour, like Cinderella here. Some are in black and white, like Alice here. Some are in, as you can see, the lion is in two shades of green. Some are in um, blue and white, and I just, I just like the variation. So, I just think it's interesting. It makes each story in it unique. Alright, so, I'm just going to move this along. along again a little bit. Okay. Here we are. On the contents page, I don't know which page I need to go to. Cinderella and the ugly sisters and the evil stepmother. <laughs> Alright. can see these are the, the blue and white illustrations I was talking about earlier. Let's keep going. Snow White. <laughs> I love fairy tales. I don't know what it is about them. I just, I find them fascinating. Um, this is her. Uh, Stiltskin. I am. Um, I'm absolutely fascinated by Once Upon a Time, the TV series. Oh, it's brilliant! I really recommend it. This is obviously Hansel and Gretel. 
um, there's a lovely picture in here Shield piping gingerbread. Right. We're almost at the story we need. And here it is. Alright, so let me just make sure you can see these pictures well enough. They are in colour and they are beautiful. Oh, here we are. Snow White and Rose Red by Jacob and Wilhelm Grimm, illustrated by Gordon Lynn. There once was a poor widow who lived in a lonely cottage. In front of the cottage was a garden, wherein stood two rose trees, one of which bore white and the other red rose. She had two children who were like the two rose trees, and one was called Snow White, and the other Rose Red. They were as good and happy, <laughs> busy and cheerful as ever two children in the world were. Only Snow White was more quiet and gentle than Rose Red. Rose Red liked better to run about in the meadows and fields, seeking flowers and catching butterflies. But Snow White sat at home with her mother and helped her with her housework or read to her when there was nothing to do. The two children were so fond of each other that they always held each other when they went out together. And when Snow White said, we will not leave each other, Rose Red answered, never so long as we live. And their mother would add, what one has she must share with the other. They often ran about the forest alone and gathered red berries, and no beasts them any harm, but came close to them trustfully. The little hare would eat a cabbage leaf out of their hands. The roe grazed by their side. The stag leapt merrily by them, and the bird sat still upon the boughs and sang whatever they knew. No mishap overtook them. If they had stayed too late in the forest, and night came on, they laid themselves down near one another upon the moss, and slept until morning came. And their mother knew this, and had no distress on their account. Once, when they had spent the night in the wood, and the dawn had He got up and looked quite kindly at them, but said nothing, and went away into the forest. And when they looked round they found that they had been sleeping quite close to a precipice, and would certainly have fallen into it, had they gone only a few paces further. And their mother told them that it must have been the angel who watches over good children. Snow White and Rose Red kept their mother's little cottage so neat that it was a pleasure to look inside it. In the summer, Rose Red took care of the house, and every morning made a wreath of flowers by her mother's bed before she awoke, in which was a rose from In the winter, Snow White lit the fire and hung the kettle on its iron hook above the hearth. The kettle was of copper and shone like gold, so brightly was it polished. In the evening, when the snowflakes fell, the mother said, Go, Snow White, and bolt the door. And then they sat round the hearth, and the mother Sat and spun, and 
close by them near One evening, as they were thus sitting comfortably together, someone knocked at the door, as if he wished to be let in. The mother said, <gasps> Quick, Rose went, open the door. It must be a traveller who is seeking shelter. Rose Red went and pushed back the bolt, thinking that it was a poor man, but it was not. It was a bear that stretched his broad black head within the door. Rose Red screamed and sprang back. The lamb bleated, the dove fluttered, and Snow White hid herself behind her mother's bed. But the bear began to speak and said, Do not be afraid. I will do you no harm. I am half frozen and only want to warm myself a little beside you. Poor bear, said the mother, lie down by the fire, only take care that you do not burn your coat. And she cried, Snow White, Rose Red, come out, the bear will do you no harm, he means well. So they both came out, and by and by the lamb and dove came nearer, and were not afraid of him. The, the bear said, Here, children, knock the snow out of my coat a little. So they brought the broom and swept the bear's hind clean, and he stretched himself by the fire and growled contentedly and comfortably. It was not long before they grew quite at home and played tricks with their clumsy guest. They tugged his hair with their hands. When he growled, they all laughed, but the bear took it all in good part. Only when they were too rough, he called, Leave me alive, children. Snowy white, rosy red, will you beat your lover dead? When it was bedtime and the others went to bed, the mother said to the bear, You can lie there. Soon as day dawned, the two children led him out, and he trotted across the snow into the forest. Henceforth, the bear came every evening at the same time, laid himself down by the hearth, and let the children amuse themselves with him as much as they liked. And they got so used to him that the doors were never fastened until their black friend had arrived. When spring had come and all outside was green, the bear said one morning to Snow White, Now I must go away, and cannot come back for the whole summer. Where are you going then, dear bear? asked Snow White. I must go into the forest and guard my treasures from the wicked dwarfs. In the winter, when the earth is frozen hard, they are obliged stay below and cannot work their way through. But now, when the sun has thawed and warmed the earth, they break through it and come out to pry and steal. And what once gets into their hands and in their caves does not easily slip to the earth again. Snow White was quite sorry for his going away as she unbolted the door for him and the bear was hurrying out, he caught against the bolt and a piece of his hairy coat was torn off, and it seemed to Snow White as if she had seen gold shining through it. She was not sure about it. The bear ran away quickly and was soon out of sight behind the trees. A short time afterwards, the mother sent her children into the forest to get firewood found a big tree which lay felled on the ground, and close
When they came nearer, they saw a dwarf with an old withered face and a snow white beard was caught in a crevice of the tree. And the little fellow was jumping backwards and forwards like a dog tied to a rope and did not know what to do. He glared at the girls with his fiery red eyes and cried, Why do you stop? Can you not come here and help me? What are you about there, little man? Asked Rose Red. You stupid prime moose, answered the dwarf. I was going to split the tree to get a little wood for cooking. The little bit of wood food that one of us wants gets burnt up directly with thick logs. You do not swallow so much as you coarse, greedy folk. I had just driven the wedge safely in and everything was going as I wished, but the wretched wood was too smooth and suddenly sprang asunder, and the tree closed so quickly that I could not pull out my beautiful white beard. So now it is tight in and I cannot get away, and the silly, sleek, milk-faced things laugh. Ugh, how odious you are. The children tried very hard, but they could not pull the beer out. It was caught too fast. I will run and fetch someone, said Rose Red. You senseless goose, snarled the dwarf. Why should you fetch someone? You are already too, too many for me. Can you not think of something better? Don't be impatient, said Snow White. I will help you. She pulled her scissors out of her pocket and cut off the end of the beard. As soon as the dwarf felt himself free, he laid hold of a bag which lay amongst the roots of the tree, which was full of gold, and lifted it up, grumbling to himself. Ungood people, to cut off a piece of my fine beard. Bad luck to you. And then he swung the bag upon his back and went off, without even once looking at the children. Some time after that, Snow White and Rose Red went to catch a dish of fish. As they came near the brook, they saw something like a large grasshopper jumping towards the water, as if it were going to leap in. They ran to it and found it was the dwarf. Where are you going? You surely don't want to go into the water. I am not such a fool, cried the dwarf. Don't you see that the accursed fish wants to pull me in? The little man had been sitting there fishing, and, unluckily, the wind had twisted his beard with a fishing line. Just then a big fish bit, and the feeble creature had not strength to pull it out. The fish kept He held on to all the reeds and rushes, but it was of little good. He was forced to follow the movements of the fish, and was in urgent danger of being dragged into the water. The girls came just in time. They held him fast and tried to free his beard from the line, but all in vain. Beard and line, beard and line were entangled fast together. Nothing was left. the dwarf saw that, he screamed out, Is that civil, you toadstool, to disfigure one's face? Was it not enough to clip off the end of my beard? Now you have cut off the best part of it. I cannot let myself be seen by my people. I wish you had been made to run the soles of all your shoes. He took a sack of pearls which lay in the rushes, and without saying a word, he dragged it away and disappeared behind a stone. 
It happened that soon afterwards the mother sent the two children to the town to buy needles and thread and laces and ribbons. The road led them across a heath upon which a huge piece of the rock lay strewn here and there. Now they noticed a large bird hovering in the air, flying slowly round and round above them. It sank lower and lower, and at last settled near a rock not far off. Directly afterwards they heard a loud, piteous cry. They ran up and saw with horror that the eagle had seized their old acquaintance, the dwarf, and was going to carry him off. The children were full of pity, at once took hold of the little man and pulled against the eagle so long that at last he let his booty go. As soon as the dwarf had recovered from his first fright, he cried within his shrill voice, Could you not have done it more carefully? You dragged at my brown coat so that it was all torn and full of holes, you helpless, clumsy creatures. Then he took up a sack. Two girls, who were by this time used to his thanklessness, went on their way and did their business in the town. As they crossed the heath again on their way home, they surprised the dwarf who had emptied his bag of precious stones into, in a clean spot and had not thought that anyone would come upon them there so late. The evening sun shone upon the brilliant stones. Mr. Bear, spare me. I will give you all my treasures. Look at the beautiful jewels laying there. Grant me my life. What do you want with such a slender little fellow as I? You would not feel me between your teeth. Come, take these two wicked girls. They are tender morsels for you, fat as young. For mercy's sake, eat them. <laughs> the bear took no heed of his words, but gave the wicked creature a single blow with his paw, and he did not move again. The girls had run away, but the bear called to them, Snow White and Rose Red, do not be afraid. Wait, I will come with you. Then they knew his voice and waited. When he came up to them suddenly, his beer skin fell off, and he stood there a handsome man, clothed all in gold. I am a king's son, he said, and I was bewitched by that wicked dwarf who had stolen my treasures. Snow White was married to him, and Rose Red to his brother, and they divided between them the great treasure which the dwarf had gathered together in his cave. 
the old mother lived peacefully and happily with her children for many years.